Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go through loads of different examples for addition reactions for alkenes. You should be able to take these examples and apply them to lots of different situations which may come up in class or come up in the exams. Remember to help you with drawing in organic chemistry, I've done my notebooks for you and if you want more examples you can go and get the workbooks which are available on my website. Here we have ethene our simplest alkene and I'm going to use this as a starting point for explaining all the different reactions then I'm going to show you the mechanism and more complicated reactions. Now we should know that the double bond in here is made up of a sigma bond and a pi bond and from experimental data we know that a sigma bond has bond density of 347 kilojoules per mole and a pi bond has a bond density of 265 kilojoules per mole meaning that this double bond is easier to break than single bonds. So I'm going to show you examples and work you through the mechanisms for hydration, hydrogenation, hydration, the addition of hydrogen halides and the addition of halogens. We can start off with a general mechanism for what happens. Here we have our alkene and for our general mechanism we're going to add X, Y to it. It is then going to break the double bond the X and the Y are going to add in across that double bond. So if we look at our general mechanism, we have our alkene and we have our X and Y. And I've just changed the orientation of it slightly to make it a little bit easier. Now, because this area here is very electronegative, it is going to shift the electrons. It's going to move the electrons down. In some things it's going to induce a dipole, in some things that dipole is going to be there already. And they're going to get orientated with the slightly positive one attracted to the electron rich area and the slightly negative one attracted away from it. Then we can show the movement of electrons and this is where electrons start and where they go to. So they start at the double bonds and go to either X or Y, whichever way it's orientated or whichever specific thing you're talking about in your drawing. And then from the middle of the bond down to the other part. This is going to lead to the formation of carbocation with our X being added on here. And then we are going to have, lost that hydrogen. And then we're going to have a positive charge because remember the electrons have gone down here so they are with Y. So we're going to have Y negative. This Y, because it has gained an electron, is going to have a lone pair of electrons and these are going to be attracted to the carbocation. And we are going to end up with X and Y being attached across the double bond. For a hydrogenation or a hardening reaction, we are going to need a nickel catalyst and it's going to need to be done at 150 degrees in the presence of hydrogen. So we have our alkene, we add hydrogen, nickel 150 degrees and we will end up with our alkane. If we want to look at our reaction mechanism I'm just making it ever so slightly more complicated here by adding in a CH3 group instead of a hydrogen. So using propene instead of ethene as one of the reactants. You'll see why a little bit later. Here we have our very, very electron dense region, which causes a shift of electrons downwards. So what we are going to end up with is this bit being a little bit negative and this bit being a little bit positive. The electrons will then move from the double bond to one of the hydrogens, shifting the electrons in that bond to the other hydrogen. 
that is going to give us A hydrogen being added across the double bond and then we're going to have a positive charge on one of the carbons for the moment it doesn't matter why later it will matter and I'll explain that later we're going to end up with a negative hydrogen because it has gained both electrons from when that bond split up then the negative charges on the negative area here of the electrons is going to add on to the positive area of our carbocation and it is going to add in to the other side of the double bond. When we are adding halogens, for example bromine, if we add that to ethene, you'll know that bromine is an orange brown colour. The bromine will be added across the double bond and the solution will become colourless. Not clear, clear will not get you any marks. So hopefully you're familiar with this as the test for alkenes, but you also need to know the mechanism that goes behind it as well. Here we have our large area, which is very electronegative. Our bromine down here because this area is very electronegative it is going to shift the electrons down inducing a dipole so this bit's going to become delta positive this bit's going to become delta negative the um, electron rich area is going to be attracted to the delta positive bromine and then the other bromine is going to be left with the electrons we are then going to end up with an one bromine added on and one bromine and one carbon having a positive charge. This is going to be our carbocation. We have a bromine with a negative charge and a lone pair and that is what is attracted to the positive part of the carbocation. And we are going to end up with one, two, dibromo, propane. If we are going to be adding a hydrogen halide across a double bond, for example, hydrogen bromide, then we can simply put one part on one carbon and the other part on the other carbon. Now for ethene, that doesn't matter which way around it goes. But if you added them in two different places, for propane, it is going to matter because you're going to end up with two different products. The HBr could be added in one orientation or it could be added in the other orientation and these are going to be two different products it is either going to be one bromo propane or two bromo propane now the structures and the names may not sound very different this is a very simplistic example when we get to more complicated things this really has a big effect with regards to the mechanism, there is only a slight change in this because there is already a dipole here. Because the bromine is more electronegative, that is going to have the delta negative charge in it. Apart from that, the mechanism is all the same. The charge comes down from 
the electronegative um, double bond to the delta positive hydrogen and then from the middle of the bond to the bromine. The hydrogen is going to be added on first, then we're going to get our carbocation. With our bromine with the lone pair, which is going to want to add on to the carbocation. Giving us bromomethane. Hydration is adding water across a double bond. And if we add that to ethene, we're going to get one product. And it really doesn't matter which way around things are added. For this, we need a phosphoric acid catalyst. at 300 degrees C and 65 um, pressure. We will then get the OH and the H being added across the double bonds. Now it really doesn't matter which way around that OH and the OH are added onto this because this is going to be ethanol, doesn't matter which way around you draw it. However, in the mechanism I'm going to show you, it is going to matter because we're using propene as our starting product. So we are going to get two possible products at the end. The phosphoric acid catalyst is important because it will produce a certain type of iron, a H3O plus iron, and that is what we need for this reaction to take place. The release of H plus ions are going to form a dative covalent bond with um, water that is going to add on to this double bond here. It's going to be a dative bond. When we're going to draw it, we're going to draw our hydrogen and then our OH2 down there. Remember this extra hydrogen? is provided by the acid so it has a positive charge associated with it and that's what's going to be attracted to the electron rich region over here. So our electrons are going to come down from the electron rich double bond to the hydrogen at the top, the electrons in the bond in the middle are going to go back to the oxygen where they started. We are then going to get our hydrogen adding on and we're going to get a positive charge on the other carbon. So this is now going to be our carbocation. Our water is going to have its lone pairs just as it always did but these lone pairs are now attracted to this positive charge on the carbocation. The um, water is going to add on and the positive charge is going to transfer down there. This is going to be taken away or the hydrogen is going to be taken away by other waters in the area and that is going to lead to the reforming of the iron that we started with, so the reforming of the catalyst. And we are going to get um, our propanol. Now this is propan 2 If the um, oxygen, if the hydroxide had gone onto the other carbon we would have had propane one or for example if this had happened and I'll draw this super as small as I can
Now this is important and we will come on to this um, in a later video.